Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to show you how to make the shoulder armor. I did get a new microphone, so feel free to tell me what you think of it in the comments below. This is what my new one sounds like. And this is what my old one sounds like. This is just the one that's attached to my headphones. I'm still not 100% sure if I've got it set up right, but I like it better so far. So we'll see how it handles for this video, and tell me if you want me to switch back. So as you can see on screen, this is what you'll get if you follow along with my tutorials. The shoulder strapping is a little different than on the clone armor, because for the Mando, I actually just attached it directly to the chest armor, whereas on the clone I had them sort of on a separate strap. There's both good and bad things to having it strapped directly to the chest armor, but so far I'm liking this a lot better than the clone armor. Just one thing less to have to deal with. Although I will say it's a bit trickier to put on. If you've been following along with my armor build up to this point, then you pretty much already know the whole process. All you really need to do is trace the template onto the foam. I'm using 6mm foam. This is EVA craft foam that you can find on Amazon or in any craft store. EVA foam comes in many thicknesses and styles, but I like to use 6mm because it's just easy to work with, and it's not super thick. And the craft foam is usually pretty cheap. Sometimes the floor mats can cost quite a bit depending on where you buy them from. They're not super expensive since EVA foam is pretty cheap in general, but they seem to be more expensive and less quality than the craft foam. But you can get whichever one you like. EVA foam is all very similar as long as you're using the same thickness. Now what I use to cut my foam is an X-Acto knife. These are very nice because you can change out the blade if it gets dull, and blades will get dull over time as you use them on the foam. I don't recommend using scissors if you want to have cleaner cuts along your edges. I'm also using a metal ruler as you can see here. This is to guide the knife along the foam. You don't want to use a wooden ruler when you're cutting like this because the knife can actually cut into the wood and sort of shave it off and that's not what you want because that will end up kind of warping the ruler and you need it to be straight. Now for that curved edge that you just saw, I can't really use a ruler on it because it's not a straight line. I would also like to point out that I beveled that curved edge because that's where the shoulder is going to kind of bend as you'll see in a little bit. And what I'm cutting out here is just the bicep armor. These are just two rectangles kind of glued together. I'll add some stuff to it later, but this is just the basic shape. Now I'm going to glue the shoulder armor pieces together. The type of glue that I'm using for this build is DAP Weldwood Contact Cement. It is extremely good at holding the foam together and creating a seamless connection, which is something that hot glue and super glue don't do very well. They tend to leave gaps in the foam, and that just doesn't look very good in the end. But they are very good for gluing stuff on top of other stuff, but contact cement should be used when you want to glue two pieces together side by side. As always, I will point out that contact cement is much more toxic and dangerous than hot glue or super glue, so don't use it if you're under the age of 18. And if you do use it, you'll want to work in a well-ventilated area so that the fumes don't get in your lungs. If you've been following along, then you probably already know most of this, but I just wanted to give you a reminder. And as you can see here, when I push the two pieces of foam together that have contact cement dried on them, they just go right together, and there's a seamless connection. It's very nice. Now this part right here might look a little different from your template, but that's just because I haven't drawn up the template yet. Basically what I'm doing here is making that little indent where the elbow armor will slot into. You'll see what I mean in a little bit, but basically this is just a little detail that adds depth and interest to the armor. 
In the next section, I'm actually going to add sort of an ammo pack to the side of this bicep armor. You don't have to do this step if you don't want to. This was just some extra foam that I had lying around, and I thought it would look good if I used it for something. So here, this green foam that I'm using is actually 2mm thick foam. I'm just going to use it to wrap it around the bicep armor and create sort of a band for the ammo pack to attach to. To attach this piece, I decided to use super glue. I figured that contact cement would be a little overkill since this is a relatively smaller piece. And lastly, when I attached this ammo pack to the bicep armor, I decided to glue it on using contact cement because this is a larger piece of foam and I didn't want it to go anywhere. Now it's time to talk about the inside of the shoulder armor, and here you can see this big block of blue foam. This is just some scrap foam that I hot glued together. It really doesn't have to be anything pretty because it's going to be underneath of the shoulder armor where nobody's going to see it. It is going to act as padding, which is going to allow the shoulder armor to stick out more from your actual shoulders, and this will just give you a more buff look. It will also keep your shoulder armor from interfering with your chest armor, which sometimes happens on my clone trooper. I think I should have added some more padding under that one, but for this one I'm going to add Add even more foam after this blue pad that you can see that's going to really boost it outwards and give it a nice strong appearance now for the straps you can see here these are very simple um, and they're very different from the clone trooper much more easy to work with on the clone trooper I actually had the shoulder armor on a separate strap where they were completely disconnected from the rest of the armor whereas here I just glued them straight to the chest armor so it's all really connected together and much much more sturdy in my opinion, although it is harder to put on, admittedly. This black tape that I'm using here is Gorilla Tape, and it is very useful for testing out where to put these straps. This tape is very strong, so what you can do is tape down your armor pieces, and then test fit everything, you know, put on the armor and test it out, see where everything lines up. And if you need to adjust it, you can just take off the tape and move it up or down a little bit. It took me several tries to get the right position for the shoulders. Sometimes they leaned too far back, and sometimes they were, you know, wiggly in certain areas. So in order to, you know, get them in the right spot, I had to try this multiple times. But after I got everything all lined up where I wanted it to be, I just marked off with a sharpie uh, where I was going to set it down. Make sure you mark on the foam with a dark sharpie and mark on the fabric with like a silver sharpie so it'll actually show up. And to glue it down, I used a mix of hot glue and contact cement. I put contact cement all around the inside parts and then I just hot glued around the edges just to make sure it was down for good.
I found that my shoulder armor was a little too wobbly when it would just sit on my shoulders, so what I ended up doing was attaching this strap underneath of the armor as you can see here. This really just holds it in place much better and prevents it from wiggling around. So that's about it for the shoulder armor guys. I hope this video was helpful if you're planning to make this costume. I'm really liking this design so far, and I can't wait to see how the finished product turns out. As with every video, I want to say thank you to my Patreon supporters. Feel free to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye guys!